small group tours, local experiences, behind the scenes access. Viator has spent decades finding activities in over 1,500 destinations around the globe because we believe vacations are called vacations for a reason. Your only job should be to choose between the Pinot Grigio and the Sangiovese. Decisions, decisions. Viator, travel with an insider. Traveling to Europe is about more than the destination. It's the journey. It's discovering new experiences. It's history and culture. It's awakening all five senses. I'm a waterways river cruises. Perillo Tours, helping Americans explore Italy since 1945. I'm Kathy McCabe. In this series, we'll meet the authentic characters, uncover the hidden treasures, and discover what makes Italy the most fascinating country in the world. Join me as we dream of Italy. There is nowhere on earth like Italy. The history, the landscape, the food, the people. This divine peninsula is arguably the home of more cultural landmarks, more beautiful places, just more of everything than any other country. It has been fought over by kings and praised by poets. It is the home of La Dolce Vita, the sweet life. And nowhere in Italy has captured the imagination of the world like Tuscany. If Tuscany didn't exist, we'd have to invent it. But this place is not frozen in time. The hills are alive. And the most famous hills are in the vibrant territory called Chianti. Dotted with postcard-like vistas, ancient hilltop villages, and vine-draped slopes, it defines for many what Tuscany is and what it looks like. Chianti is also known as a wine, but the wine in the region are not exactly the same. Chianti, the wine, is made in old Tuscany, but we have a name from a small region. Chianti produced only Chianti Classico. The distinction is important to Lorenza Palanti. At Castello di Ama, she and her husband Marco produce a highly praised version of Chianti Classico. Although historically renowned for its quality, by the 1960s, Chianti Classico had devolved into a watered-down, cheap spaghetti red. But over the last 30 years, Castello di Ama has, along with other producers, lifted the wine out of its dark ages. When you have a great uh, roots, when you have a great uh, you know, region, of course, there is a renaissance time. And this is the case for Chianti Classico. Many, many producers here had this uh, passage where you get a great wine, then you want to, you see your place, you see the beautiful vineyards where you are. So you see, of course, a potential, and then you have to work hard. So what grapes are in the Chianti Classico? This is almost 100% Sangiovese, just a little, little of Merlot. This is really the jamming, the very good expression of the Sangiovese with a lot of fruit, very much finesse. Thinking of a Chianti Classico like a walk in a forest because the smell is so authentic and you have all these red fruits coming, that it's beautiful. Lorenza and Marco are not just producers of fine wine, but like the Renaissance princes of Tuscany's past, they are also patrons of fine art. Each year they invite an artist from around the world to contribute a piece to their otherwise traditional rural Tuscan estate. The result is a unique mix of classic and modern. Contemporary art, wine, music, you need something that opens your eyes, opens your heart. And when it happens, oh my God, it's such an amazing moment. You will remember forever. This place has a history and has a special soul that the artist can uh, somehow feel. And we are the guardian of this, nothing more. 
food. In a nearby valley, the fall harvest is underway for Chianti's other famous product, olive oil. At Podere Pornanino, Matteo Robuti and his friend Michael Platten are picking olives in the estate's small grove. Olives are originally from the warmer parts of the Mediterranean, so the relatively cool climate in Chianti means that the trees are always at risk of freezing in the winter. They are small and delicate here, much different than the twisted giants of the Italian South. As a small producer, the focus at Pornanino is on quality. Hand harvesting and gathering in soft nets helps protect the delicate fruit. After the olives are gathered into small containers, they are brought down the hill to the mill, or frantoio. The olives are separated from the leaves, washed, and crushed into a thick paste by two giant stone wheels. The paste is then spread between fiber mats, which are stacked and pressed to release the oil. Known as green gold, Tuscan olive oil is an expensive treat, as much as twice the cost of an average bottle. Cheers. <laughs> but it has a flavor that is utterly distinct, peppery, spicy, and absolutely delicious. The vineyards and olive groves of Chianti are world famous, but tucked into its hills and valleys are hidden treasures, four-legged ones. At Nora Kravis's Chianti Cashmere Farm, these goats are the star attraction. We were the first cashmere goat farm in Italy. We started in 1995 by importing the first goats because they didn't exist in Italy yet. Over the years, the trained veterinarian imported more goats and crossbred them with different varieties of native Italian breeds. The herd that I have has a very broad genetic base, but it is an Italian goat. But a cashmere goat in Tuscany? Aren't they high-altitude, cold climate animals? It helps for the growing season, having a low temperature, mm -hmm. but the quality of the cashmere mm -hmm. depends on genetics. 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 <laughs> Do you like this? <laughs> In the fall, the young males prepare for the mating season. What they're doing is they're creating and stabilizing their social Position. Do they get injured? Oh, yeah. And then the one who doesn't win doesn't get to breed. And Nora has some serious challenges from the surrounding hills. We have major, major problems with predators now. The European wolf, a protected species, is the culprit. We have lost 30 goats over the last five years. <laughs> Nora's solution has been to bring in an old Italian breed of guard dog. This is called a pastore abruzzese, which is an abruzzo shepherd dog. They're protective without being overly aggressive. Since she started using these dogs, Nora hasn't lost a single goat. And without shooting any wolves, a common and illegal practice here. Nora's efforts to live in harmony with the wolves have brought her praise. And watching these beautiful animals live and work together, it is rightly deserved. But the real payoff is the wool, the luxurious cashmere that is coveted around the world. The cashmere goat actually has two coats of hair. The cashmere is the undercoat that keeps it warm in the winter. Okay. So it sheds it in the spring. So you have to comb it out in the spring. So we literally comb the cashmere out with the comb. So do you want to try? Yeah. Okay. And I tend to work with the point of the comb because it comes out easier that way. See, it's coming out very easily now. It's not yeah. hard at all. Yeah, yeah. Look how much we got. You have to be efficient because remember, this is liquid gold that we're talking about. <laughs> For Nora, all this work is worth it when the luxurious cashmere is transformed into sumptuous scarves, sweaters, and other products. 
hidden treasures in the Tuscan Hills. The local wolves may have a hard time getting to Nora's goats, but they should be able to find plenty of their traditional prey, wild boar or chingale. The fast-moving and fast-breeding chingale are plentiful in these woods and a menace to local wineries. A small pack can destroy a vineyard in one night, eating grapes and leaves and ripping up the trellised vines. Hunting chingale is a serious passion for many here. And outside the village of Penzano, La Squadra Chiantigiana gathers for their weekly hunt. Each hunter has a number written on their hand and recorded in a book. At the end of the day, the number is checked to make sure every hunter has safely returned. Attente che si fa. Punto e basta. Va bene? Attente che si fa. Va bene? Speriamo che la cacciata vada bene, vada... Qui i cinghiali non come America. Più furbi, più intelligenti. Da lì il cinghiale macchia d'olio. Si è spanto tutto il territorio. Non vi voglio sentire piatare, chiaro? Va bene? Ciao. La cosa più bella è che le squadre a cinghiali le sono l'unica associazione che riesce a tenere insieme ancora un paese piccolo come Panzano. Da parte mia mi fa piacere che si sia rimasti noi forse a Panzano un pochino, un pochino più indietro e dall'altra parte, che ancora c'è la gente ancora in paese piccolo, si vuole bene, certamente, anche duro. The hunters spread out, creating a circle around the area where they hope there will be cingale. Una caccia bella. Però bisogna capire tutto che cos'è l'organizzazione di una cacciata al cinghiale. I cani, ascoltare quando il cane lavora, quella è la bellezza, la bellezza della caccia al cinghiale. Quando il cane trova, trova dove, dove è l'animale, la, appaia a fermo dove è il cinghiale. È tutto un insieme che è bella, caccia di compagnia. È una cosa che non importa ammazzare il cinghiale, l'importante è poterlo cacciare e trovare, capito? Abbiamo circondato il bosco e quindi eh, ora sciolgono i cani in attesa che poi li devono trovare i cinghiali. Questo è il momento più difficile perché fino a quando li sono trovati è una tensione un po' diversa. E se la Baetro Raffaele è tutta distrutta la vigna, tu vedrai, e qua sono stai. Dovrebbe essere lontana il mondo. Ragazzi c'è il calafermo! Andava via un daino, mi hai detto lui. La bella firma un daino. Tutti gli fermo Paolo, tutti è... Sta attento perché gli scappa proprio tutto da questo muro e venga verso di te. Attenta le forze in un branco! Eccolo, eccolo, attento! Paolo, 
on this day, the club killed seven Chingale. All the meat will be eaten by the hunters or sold to local restaurants. The town of Panzano has become synonymous with meat, and not just because of its boar hunting. Panzano is home to Dario Cicchini, the colorful and opinionated butcher, famous throughout Italy and around the world. He has invited me into his shop to show me his version of the legendary Bistecca alla Fiorentina. Ma è molto molto semplice. Tre colpi. Vedi? Sì. È una bistecca monumentale con il controfiletto e con il filetto e l'osso a T. E alta un dito, per così. Oppure quattro dei miei, che sono dita belle grandi. La nostra meraviglia. Guarda che belle bistecche. As Penzano's king of meat, Dario has offered to serve the happy hunters his epic bistecca. Dobbiamo cuocerla insieme stasera per tanta, tanta gente affamata, per tanti amici. I'm looking forward to it. Siamo fortunati. That night at the hunter's clubhouse, Dario arrives in a flurry of horns, ready to cook his gargantuan steaks. After a first course of pasta with wild boar, Dario gives me a lesson in the proper way to grill his signature slabs of beef. Vai, Katie. Eight minutes and eight minutes. Eight minutes and eight minutes. Wow. Guarda. These are the biggest steaks I have ever seen. Questa e questa. Okay. Sixteen minutes later, they're done. And then Dario, for whom food and theatrics are synonymous, presents the beef. Along the eastern edge of Tuscany's border with Umbria is the ancient town of Angari. Connoisseurs of some of Italy's finest fabrics know it as the home of Busatti. Since 1842, this small factory in the basement of a 16th century palazzo has been producing sumptuous textiles in linen, cotton, and wool. The active looms date back to the company's founding. As eighth-generation proprietor Giovanni Sassolini Busati explains, their customers prefer fabrics made the old-fashioned way. Most of the production requested is the old one. High quality, shuttle looms, very soft production, very slow but with well finished. These British wool machines were cutting edge when they were imported from England in 1914. And even today, their quality is unrivaled. But we maintain the old one because we see that the, the future is in the past. Busati's wool production is a small part of its overall business, but an important one, as it relies entirely on native sheep from the surrounding Apennine Mountains. The wool is local. It's incredible. But this rare breed is slowly dying out. Remain here just 10,000 sheep, no more. Unfortunately, step by step, we lose this magic tradition of the area. In the wall, we use just natural color. That, that is beautiful. The system of production is very complicated. So we have people that work here for two, three generations, and it's so important to maintain these people, to discuss and to improve the work. Every day, they bring something more. While some may look to the modern world for inspiration, Giovanni finds new ideas in the history and art of the Renaissance. When I need to do something of very, very new, I go in Florence, I go inside Santa Maria Novella, I recover something that is inside me. The past, with its old world tools and processes, is the key to the company's survival. 
I am an old man, so for me to see the future is impossible. My future is so short, so I prefer to, to look behind. With a dedication to timeless quality like this, Gusadi's future seems secure. My last stop in Tuscany brings me to its southwest corner and the flat wetlands known as the Maremma. My destination is a vast preserve of stately umbrella pines and remote untouched beaches. It's also the home to the last remaining Butari, the cowboys of the Maremma. The work of the Butari goes back to when the Maremma was malarial swamp with more cattle than people. L'unica cosa per sfruttare queste aree era il pascolo. Poi le bonifiche hanno decretato anche la fine o la quasi estinzione di questo mestiere. Perché è logico che te cosa hai fatto? Hai trasformato questi terreni in terreni agricoli. Head Butero Alessandro Zampieri oversees a small team that keeps the tradition alive. Ma il nostro prodotto principe, diciamo, è la carne, questa carne molto salubre, molto sapida, particolare proprio perché sono animali che vivono in una maniera che una volta era naturale, ora non lo è più. The butchery may seem like a museum exhibit come to life, but Alessandro dispels the notion. Ma il butchery è tanto una persona normalissima. L'unica sua particolarità, che è poi la base di tutti i lavori, che deve avere una grande passione per il lavoro con gli animali. L'abbigliamento è molto semplice, si adegua alle stagioni. Abbiamo queste giacche, diciamo, comode con tasche, più tasche, perché... Poi abbiamo il nostro bastone, che è la nostra terza mano. Quella ci aiuta in tantissimo nel lavoro. Qui c'è una disciplina militare. C'è un vertice che sono io, sotto a me c'è Stefano. Non si discute, cioè si fa così, perché è un lavoro che io insegno con secoli di esperienza alle spalle. Allora noi qui in azienda abbiamo la razza logicamente è solo maremmana, che è la razza autoctona qui della zona. Abbiamo 70 equini maremmani per una produzione del cavallo da sella. Alessandro ha spent most of his life on horseback herding cattle on this magnificent land. Mi piace ancora fare il buttero qualche volta, uscire a cavallo con questi ragazzi, anzi sarebbe la mia la mia massima aspirazione. Logicamente, siccome sono anche nonno, poi è il fisico che mi dice "Guarda, è meglio che ci vai meno a cavallo". Fai il nonno, non fare non fare il buttero. is so famous it has become shorthand for all things Italian. But it is much more than good food, good wine, and beautiful vistas. It's a real place where real people live and work. To beef or not to beef. Every day I was surprised and delighted by the people and places I found here. I think you will be too. Small group tours, local experiences, behind the scenes access.
Viator has spent decades finding activities in over 1,500 destinations around the globe because we believe vacations are called vacations for a reason. Your only job should be to choose between the Pinot Grigio and the Sangiovese. Decisions, decisions. Viator. Travel with an insider. Traveling to Europe is about more than the destination. It's the journey. It's discovering new experiences. It's history and culture. It's awakening all five senses. On the waterways, river cruises. Perillo Tours, helping Americans explore Italy since 1945.